Earlier this month, the arrest of a Taiwanese YouTuber drew attention to a technology known as deep fake. A YouTuber known as Xiao Yu and two others were arrested on charges of making deep fake sex videos targeting celebrities and politicians. Deep fake is a technology that can make realistic videos of people doing things they never did. It uses deep machine learning to make fake videos so convincing they can fool not only the naked eye, but also the software designed to detect them. Today, in our Sunday special report, we take a closer look at this rising technology and its alarming implications for democracies worldwide. Every year on December 25th, Queen Elizabeth II of England delivers a message to her people. For nearly 70 years, I have kept a tradition of speaking to you at Christmas. Sharp-eyed observers might find that this Christmas message is not quite like the rest. Like many of you, when I wasn't settling down with my husband to Netflix and Phil, as I like to call it, I was perfecting my moves for TikTok. The monarch tells a joke before beginning a dance routine. Believe it or not, she is not the queen. Behind the curtain is actress Deborah Stephenson, who little resembles the royal in appearance or in age. She is transformed through the miracle of modern technology. National China University Xu Zhizhong is one of the few scholars in Taiwan who study facial recognition and synthesis technology. He said the Queen's alternative Christmas message was created with a tool known as deepfake. The defining feature of deepfakes is that it's not important who the actor is. If enough data is fed to the computer, any person can become anybody they want to be. In most cases of face swapping, it doesn't take much for an actor to satisfy the basic requirements. The two people do not really need to look alike. But some basic features should be similar. For example, light and shadow. For example, their skin color might need to be the same. Their appearance shouldn't be too different. Li Chunyi and Chen Guanling are both Professor Xu's graduate students. They show me how it's done. Images and videos of their faces are loaded into a facial synthesis program, which analyzes and deconstructs the data. Once the computer has learned each of their facial features, it's able to superimpose one student's face onto another. Through the power of artificial intelligence, and specifically what's known as deep learning, an ordinary laptop can generate sophisticated fake videos that could easily lead the way to fraud. This tech also exists in the form of mobile apps that let the user replace their face with a celebrity's. It's fun to play around with, but it could also be dangerous in the wrong hands. Once a program is trained on a large data set of real images, it can create footage of you saying things you never said. President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. In this video, actor Jordan Peele impersonates Barack Obama, making him give a speech about fake news. The video was made to warn about the dangers of deep fake technology, which has been used to create fake celebrity porn. A sultry Emma Watson appears in this video that's nearly impossible to spot as a fake. But it is. Created by a computer, this is one in a tide of sexually explicit deepfakes that can ruin lives and reputations. Photos and videos of public figures are very easy to obtain. So using synthesis tools, it is very easy to achieve a realistic synthesis. Besides, when we're watching videos or looking at digital information, we usually just glance at them. We don't examine the details with care. So this information can propagate very easily to all corners of the world. Social media makes it so easy. 
A piece of information can suddenly spread out in a swarm, and people don't have enough time to distinguish whether it's real or fake. Public figures have public influence. When that influence is misappropriated by deep fake, it can have far-reaching social implications. During an election, if someone makes a deep fake video and distributes it for a political purpose or some other purpose, that's very likely to have an impact on the election. It could give rise to an unfair election. Chen Huiming is editor in chief of the Taiwan Fact Check Center. After the latest U.S. presidential election, she and her team noticed an online video accused of being a deep fake. It was footage of Trump conceding his defeat, and not a few of his supporters were convinced it was created by AI. But because this video was distributed by major U.S. news outlet, Chen's team was skeptical that the footage was a deliberate fabrication. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. 川普承认败选这样真实的影片，那却被宣称说哦，这个是生。If such a highly realistic video of Trump conceding defeat can be declared a deep fake, that's an alarming implication. This was such an important announcement, and yet the video was declared to be fake. So we needed to look into it. Only using the naked eye, it can be near impossible to verify the authenticity of a video. So Chen enlisted the help of Professor Xu. Using detection software he developed himself, he was able to determine whether the footage of Trump was real. We said that since AI can be used to produce videos that can't be distinguished from the real thing, and since people don't have the time to detect fakes, we have to use AI to fight AI. That's the only way we have a shot at restoring balance to the situation. For example, in this frame, the software automatically detects his face and throws it into the network's model. The result of the algorithm is 0.46. It's less than 0.5, so we determined that the deepfake rumor was false. The deepfake detection software uses the value of 0.5 to assess authenticity. The lower the score, the more likely it is that the content is real. Footage of Trump's concession speech is scored 0.46, indicating that it's likely to be real. But this video of the Queen's Christmas speech scores above 0.9 and is judged by the software to be fake. Actually, the camera is rotating. Isn't that right? But her face is not rotating. The face is not rotating even though the whole body and the head are turning. Did you notice that her face is basically at a fixed point? It flies against common sense. This is one of the distinguishing features of deep fakes, but it's not easy for people to pick up. What AI can make, AI can also identify. But Professor Xu said that the current machine learning models need to be trained on more data sets. He said deep fake detection still has a long way to go. There are only a few very deep fakes that are made to intentionally discredit and attack people. They only emerge once in a while. If we know right away that the video is fake, we can take the video and those images and learn how it was falsified. AI models for deep fake detection can be deceived. For example, they can be misled when what pops up is not a human face, but the face of a dog, or the face of a cat, or a car. The combination of two elements can make this form of malicious information or malicious media more difficult to detect. Once deepfakes are released into the world, the challenge becomes checking their distribution. Many social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, have instituted gatekeeping mechanisms. When social media platforms are faced with this problem, basically their view is that, first, they want to know if there is an element of manipulation in its production. Second, if there is an element of manipulation, they want to know what the specific purpose was. Perhaps it was to throw an election or to cause public harm. In such case, they will take action to deal with it. Actually, you have to make judgments on what is misinformation and what is hate speech. It's actually very ambiguous. It's quite unclear. Social media platforms don't want to take on this responsibility. Therefore, there's usually a third-party organization that comes in and says, this is misinformation. 
In Taiwan, Facebook and Line are partnered with Taiwan Fact Check Center to combat misinformation. When potentially spurious content gains traction online, the Fact Check Center is responsible for verification. Information that's determined to be fake can be targeted by filters. 美国拜登总统就职典礼，那呃，当天台湾就流传了一个讯息。On U.S. President Joe Biden's inauguration day, a piece of information started circulating in Taiwan about how Taiwan representative to the U.S. Xiaobi Kim was not invited. That same day, we conducted a fact check on this information about Xiao on whether she went to Biden's inauguration. When the results came out, we sent a report to Facebook. Facebook used AI detection to deal with the misinformation. Through an algorithm, Facebook can detect misinformation on its platform. It can tag misinformation. Placing a fact check report next to it so that users can assess its credibility. It can also directly reduce the exposure of the misinformation on its platform. As for Line, the mobile app has fact checking chat bots. Once added to a chat room, the bots let users know if the information they share is false. 比如说像美玉仪，或者是趋势科技的防诈达人。他 ，For example, there's GoGo Look and Trend Micro's Doctor Message. You can add them to your groups. When your friends or family are posting information, the chatbots will compare it to their database. If they find that the information they're sending has been fact-checked and there's a report, it will create a message in your chat room. It'll let everyone know that what they're talking about has a fact-checked report that they can check out. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Dr. Caro Joana Ife. Deep fake technology has made the internet a more confusing place as its creations get harder and harder to detect. When you can no longer trust your eyes, the only way forward is cautiously and with doubt, taking heed that you not be deceived.